Our topic will be about money time relationships and equivalents. So first, we have to discuss about the interest and its kinds, which are the simple and compound interest. So first, what is interest? It is the amount of money paid for the use of borrowed capital or the income produced by money which has been loaned. So ito yung kabayaran ng hiniram kong pera. Sa dineposit kong pera, ito yung magiging tubo. Sa hiniram kong pera, ito yung aking kabayaran. So that is the interest. So the first kind of interest is the simple interest which is calculated using the principal only, ignoring any interest that had been accrued in preceding periods. So in other words, it is paid on short-term loans in which the time of the loans is measured in dates. So simple interest has the formula of I is equal to P times N times I, where I is the interest, kung ilan yung interest ko sa aking hiniram, P is the principal or present worth, N is the number of interest period, then I is the rate of interest per interest period, and F is the accumulated amount or future worth. F is equal to P plus I or P plus P and I because I is equal to P and I. And factoring out, etong formula na ito, factoring out the P, that is F is equal to P times the quantity of 1 plus M times I. Then, there are two types of simple interest. The first one is the ordinary simple interest. It is the most commonly used uh, simple interest computed on the basis of 12 months or 30 days each or 360 days a year. So, one interest period is 360 days, yung equivalent natin or yung gagamitin natin sa ating length of time sa ordinary simple interest. Sa exact simple interest naman, based on the exact number of days in a year, 365 days for an ordinary year and 366 for a leap year. From the word exact, so exact to yung dapat na bilang ng araw na ating bibilangin within a certain period. Okay, the next one is the compound interest. This is the second kind of interest. In calculations of compound interest, the interest for an interest period is calculated on the principal plus total amount of interest accumulated in previous period. So, kung hindi ko mababayaran yung unang loan ko, Yung compound interest yung magiging applicable sa pagpatong ng another interest sa hiniram kong may interest na. So, compound interest means interest on top of interest. The principal at beginning of period is P. Interest earned during the period is P times I. Okay? The amount at the end of the period is P plus PI. Okay? Ito yung F natin or yung amount. And until sa end period ko, yung principal at the beginning of the period will be P times 1 plus I raised to N minus 1. The interest earned during the period is P times 1 plus I raised to N, raised to N minus 1 times I. Then my amount at the end of the period is P times 1 plus I raised to and so, ito yung mostly ginagamit natin in computation for the amount at the end of each period. So, in finding for F, given kanina sa, sa ating table, F is equal to P times 1 plus I raised to N. Where in the quantity, 1 plus I raised to N is commonly called the single payment compound amount factor and is designated by the functional symbol or is read as F given P at I percent in N interest period. So, bali yung ating quantity 1 plus I raised to N, pwede, kong, pwede ko siyang isulat sa ganitong symbol. In finding for P naman or the present worth, that is equal to F times 1 plus I raised to negative N. So, negative na yung N natin kasi magiging denominator siya sa ating F. Okay. So, the quantity 1 plus i raised to negative n is called single payment present worth factor and is designated by the functional symbol p over f i percent n or is read as p given f at i percent in n interest periods. 
So, yung quantity ko na to can be written as this one. Then, the rates of interest. The first rate of interest is the nominal rate of interest. It specifies the rate of interest and the number of interest period in one year. So, nominal rate of interest is equal to R over M, wherein R is the nominal interest rate. Kung magkano yung interest ko per year. Okay. The M is the number of compounding periods per year. So, ang M natin may specific values talaga siya. When we say annually, M is equal to 1. Semi-annually, M is equal to 2. Quarterly, M is equal to 4. And for monthly, M is equal to 12. So, basically, yung value ng M natin is the value wherein kung ilang beses natin hinati-hati yung isang taon. The next one is the effective rate of interest. It is the actual or exact rate of interest on the principal during one year. So that is equal to 1 plus R over M raised to M minus 1. So yung R natin is the same, the nominal rate of interest, then the M is the number of compounding periods per year. Then, for the continuous compounding, it is the kind of computing the value of money if interest are paid every day. So, kung yung interest ko is compounded daily, okay, so ito yung formula na gagamitin natin. F is equal to P times E raised to Rn, wherein our E, hindi natin po problemahin yung value niya kasi constant siya. That is called the Euler's constant, which has the value of 2.71828. Okay, R is the nominal rate of interest and the N is of course the number of years. And in finding for the present worth, that is equal to F times E raised to negative R times N. So for example, determine the ordinary simple interest on 700 pesos for 8 months and 15 days if the rate of interest is 15%. So given yung ating P which is 700 pesos, our I is 15%, our N is 8 months and 15 days. Kung ikakompute natin kung, ang, kung ilan yung total number of days niya, that is 255 days. Considering all months consist of 30 days because ordinary simple interest yung ating problem. So using the formula I is equal to P and I, P is 700, our N is 255 and since ordinary nga siya, we have to divide 360 sa ating number of days. Then I is 0.15. So our interest will result to 74 pesos and 38 centavos. The second example determine the exact simple interest on 500 for the period from January 10 to October 28, 1996 at 16% interest. Okay, so our given is 500 pesos which is the P. The I is 0.16 and N is from January 10 to October 28. Meaning, bibilangin natin kung ilang number of days yung in between ng January 10 to October 28. So, from January, okay, that consists of 21 days kasi January has 31 days. 31 minus 10, which is our starting day. 31 minus 10 is 21. February has 29. Since 1996 na year is a leap year. March has 31, April has 30, and so on, until for our October, which only has 28 days, kasi nag siya sa October 28. So that is all in all 292 days. So using again the same formula, P is 500, and is 292 over 366, kasi lipir, times 0.16, our interest will result to 63 pesos and 83 centavos. What will be the future worth of money after 14 months if a sum of 10,000 pesos is invested today at a simple interest rate of 12% per year? So given yung 10,000 since yung tinatanong sa problem is the future worth or F, P is 10,000, I is 12% or 0.12 in decimal, N is 14 months. Then using the future worth formula, then P is 10,000 times 1 plus our N. N is 14 months, so kailangan natin siyang i-divide by 12 para maging year yung ating unit dito. Times our I, which is 0.12, 
So that results to 11,400 pesos is our future worth. Compute for the effective annual interest in the following situations. For letter A, 10% nominal interest compounded semi-annually and for letter B, compounded quarterly. So using the effective annual interest rate formula, okay, substitute natin yung R is equal to 0.10, then M is for letter A that is 2 because semi-annual siya. So 1 plus 0.10 over 2 quantity squared minus 1, so that results to 10.25. 25%. For letter B, using the same formula, 1 plus 0.10 over 4 raised to 4 minus 1, that results to 10.38%. The next one, if you deposit $4,000 into an account paying 6% annual interest compounded quarterly, how much money will be in the account after 5 years? So given our P is $4,000, R is 6%, N is 5 years, M is equal to 4 or quarterly. Then using the formula for computing the future worth, that is P times the quantity of 1 plus I raised to N. Then our P is $4,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4, kasi quarterly siya, raised to 5 times 4. Ni-raise natin siya sa 5 times 4 kasi... Every year, my four periods tayo. So, quarterly yung periods natin per year times 5, that is our exponent. Then, our rate, which is 6%, we have to divide it by 4. Yung 6% is only applicable for one year, so we have to divide it by 4. Then, the result for 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4 is equal to 1.015. 5 times 4 is equal to... 20, and that results to $5,387.42. How much money would you need to deposit today at 9% annual interest compounded monthly to have $12,000 in the account after 6 years? So, yung hinahanap dito is yung P. Kasi, ang tinatanong kung magkano yung dapat mong i-deposit ngayon in order to have $12,000 in your account after 6 years. So, itong $12,000 is yung F natin. Okay? R is 9%, N is 6 years, and M is monthly kasi compounded monthly siya. Then, using the formula for P or the present value that is equal to F times 1 plus I raised to negative N. F is 12,000 times 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 12 raised to negative 6 times 12. Then, $12,000 times 1.0075 raised to negative 72, that is equal to $7,007.08. Find the accumulated value of 14,500 pesos at the end of 3 years if money is worth 4% compounded daily. So, accumulated value meaning the future worth given the P, which is the 14,500 R is equal to 4% and N is 3 years, so compounded daily siya, meaning we have to use the continuous compounding formula for F, which is P times E raised to R, N. Then our P is 14,500 times E raised to 0 0.04 times 3. Then that is equal to 16,348 pesos and 70 centavos. So that is all for... The interest topic, the simple and the compound interest for your questions, just comment down on our discussion section in Schoology.